I am Adam Reed. Um, I am here today with Hair Tribe, and I'm going to be sharing with you a really beautiful, quite romantic look. Um, I've always loved a braid, and actually, way, way back when I was really little, braiding was the first thing I ever learned to do. I remember um, a really old family friend who used to get me to braid her hair, and I think that was one of those things that. I sort of fell in love with and year upon year when I've been getting people ready for red carpet or um, runways I've always sort of brought a braid in and out. It's really effective, it's really simple um, and you can really sort of mix it up I mean, as long as you have the, the sort of the principles of braiding you, you're never going to do too bad. So with Melissa's hair she has the most incredible hair um, so I'm working just from her natural hair, she's got this really beautiful wave we haven't put any product in yet and again I want to keep that real sort of element of romance in here but maintain modernity that's really important there's nothing worse than when you see something that's too overdone so the the looseness of the hair should stay there that's key um, but then it's about how you structure that and to give that structure I'm going to use a little bit of a velvet ribbon one of my favorite places in London is McCulloch and Wallace in Soho, there are loads of places there, VV, Rollo, McCulloch and Wallace, um, and I go and pick up all sorts of things. And one of the things that, um, I love tagging names on the looks that I do. And a couple of seasons ago, I picked up these lovely tassels and we sort of coined this whole haberdashery thing. So using haberdashery and putting it in your hair. Um, you can see what I did there, that little play on words. But this is gonna add that real beautiful romantic feel. I'm gonna pop those into the braids. Um, as I said, I want to keep the texture in the hair, so I'm using a wet hairspray. Um, this is a non-aerosol hairspray that I absolutely love. You could also use a little bit of a texturizing spray. If I was going to use a texturizing spray here, what I would do is spray it onto my fingers. If you've seen any of the work that I do, I always talk about your hands being your, your sort of your most important tool. And it's a really great way of getting product into the hair. And what you can see here, just by working that into the hair, gently massaging it in, take your time, um, you'll start to see that movement coming through and you can just see that real romantic feel that you get. It's a little bit worn in, it's a little bit looser. Um, over the years I've worked with some incredible makeup artists, but there's a makeup artist called Alex Box and she does the most incredible work and a lot of what she does on the face is with her hands and through working with her backstage at the shows I really got this feel of applying your product to your fingers and then warming it up and warming it into the hair and you get the most incredible finish and movement and you can just see here with Melissa's hair it just gives you that really nice texture you really wouldn't get that any other way there's you know you don't get that sort of movement in the hair and you can just see how you can gently manipulate that around and it's just got that lovely feel if you want it a little bit smoother this is a really great brush this is called a primp brush um, and what's great about this is just the compact sort of bristles that you get here they're pretty much one level so again if you just want to smooth that down what you'll see is you just get that incredible feel and if you really like a, a, a good strong feel a little bit of your wet hairspray I get this from Italy it's just a L'Oreal professional product but it's a really good strong hold um, and it just gives you that amazing feel so you can just see here by working that through if you want that really glossy shiny amazing finish you get that there um, and that's just using your primp brush. I get this from sessionkit.co.uk and it's one of those websites that do things that you see people using and you have no idea where they come from. They have amazing pins and grips. Another great place for pins and grips is Banbury Postiche. Um, and that's if you like wig making, you'll find a lot of stuff there. But my trusty old geisha pins, which are my favorite pins of all time, I have stashes of these just in case they ever stop making them. Um, and these are some of the best pins that you buy, that's Banbury Postiche. But again, a great place is Passage to Industry in Paris. Um, and they at Cyrilido and places like that do the most amazing kit. And um, when I was assisting a long, long time ago, I used to go and stock up on my brushes and my kit. Um, I've been lucky enough to go to Japan and if you do ever um, go to Japan, go to places like Tokyo Hands and that and you'll find the most incredible kit. Um, but if you find things that you love, just stock up on them and get absolutely bloody loads of it because you will find, if you could just turn slightly around for me, you will find that um, if, you, if you can't get your kit, I become like a, a spoiled child um, that really gets angry if I don't have 
or I run out of certain things. So I'm using a hook band here, um, one of those sort of old classics, it's just a, a really good elastic. If I was working backstage at the shows or in the salon, I would use this. I get this from McCulloch and Wallace. And what is great about this is it's, it's the most incredible elastic. And when you pull it, you can see the ridges. As that comes in, that sets perfectly around the hair. So I have assistants in the salon who know exactly how I like a ponytail tied. And if I'm backstage at the shows, we would always use this. And again, this is just, I think it's three millimeter round elastic. Um, and we do ponytail classes where I teach people how to tie the perfect pony because without a doubt, it's probably the most difficult thing to get right. Use your hook wrap and I'm using my forefinger to hold the pressure in there. Wrap and always go in towards the head. So again, the amount of times that I see people tying these that go out by going in you're getting that absolutely incredible tension and then you hook in behind and that will secure that in. Now if I was tying this with elastic, I'd go around a good four times because when you go four times, you get two more pieces of elastic so you get that perfect kick and then the hair falls perfectly away from the head and that gives you that sort of perfect pony. What we're going to do here is I'm just splitting that into two split that into three and I'm doing a really simple three strand plait on both of those sections. This isn't tight because I want an element of looseness here. You're using the two braids to give you that sort of interest that you get from a braid. I'm just pulling that through here and you can see it's got that real nice softness in there. And then I'm going to use my good old super stretch bands. I get these from Pack, Pax in Ridley Road um, and again I can go and spend hours and hours in packs, packs finding incredible product, amazing wigs, um, brushes, uh, hair bands. These are about two pounds or something but they're the really good little elastics. You can get them in all sorts of colours, clear, brown, black, multicoloured um, and you just get that really great tension. And again if you're using one of those all I recommend that when you take it out just snip it off. So move that to the side, we pop our other braid through. If you like a really neat braid, just spray your fingers as you're working through and use the spray as a braid aid. It's just a really nice way of getting something clean. We're not looking for anything too clean here. Um, as I said, we want to maintain that ele element of, rom sort of romantic feel, but still keeping it modern. Um, and by adding our ribbon at the end, we're gonna maintain that modernity, but also we've got that real sort of beautiful, soft feminine. This is great editorial, it's great fashion week stuff. It's really great for weddings and stuff like that uh, because it's really simple, really easy to do, but you get that sort of really beautiful element of romance coming through. I'm just gonna gently pull those out. And again, you can see that just opens up that braid and gives it that really nice movement and sort of softness coming all the way through. We're not hurting there at all, are we? I'm not pulling. Just checking. Then take your ribbon here as well. Actually, I want a little bit more movement in here. So just using my fingers, I'm gently manipulating that out just to get that softness. And you can see it gives it that slight halo feel. It's if, even if you want that sort of movement in there, but you don't want such a halo feel, get the, the lift out, spray your fingers with your wet hairspray, and then just gently pull that through. And again, what you can see, that just loosens it up, but then you get that sort of slightly cleaner feel. Um, but you can still see that movement, and that's sort of essential for what we're looking for here. Take your ribbon, bring it round the front, into the ear, tie it at the nape, I keep a full bag of all of this sort of stuff, just in case, and it's amazing how many times at shows and um, shoots, we've wanted something a little bit different, and this just gives us that something a little bit different. Tie it around your band, and then what we're going to do, take your braid and pull it over, and use your geisha pin. Take your geisha pin and spray it, 
push back in behind your band. You're using your band there to anchor. Take your next braid, bring it over. Take your geisha pin, push in and in behind your band. The band is the anchor. So what you can see there, you've got that softness. You've got that shape. Take your braid underneath, knot it, literally tie it in a knot. Tuck it in under the hair. Take a geisha pin, loop it under and hide. Is that okay? Do exactly the same on the other side. So take your geisha pin, loop it under, hide, gently manipulate until you've got your shape. And again, a hair up for me is always about balance. So just make sure you've got that really soft balance. Now I'm just gonna keep the ribbon hanging. You could cut that away because actually the simplicity of the detail that you get there is really nice. But what I'm gonna do there is just take that, tie it into a little bow. It's quite hard with my sausage fingers. In underneath. Loop that into one of my pins. beautiful soft but still sort of feminine and beautiful braided ribboned bun.